Calling All Authors, the Your Book, Your Voice podcast with host Robert A. Lane features everything you need to know about narrating your audio book, but it doesn't stop there. We have special guests lined up from all aspects of the book publishing industry, and we also dive deep into what it takes to be mentally prepared for success as an author and in life. So please welcome your host, Robert A. Lane. Hey, my friends, how are you today? This is the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. Thank you so much for joining. I'm Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. We are streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. And uh, as I say, glad you're here. Quick introduction in case this is your first time tuning into the podcast. I am an audiobook coach and producer, and I specialize in helping nonfiction authors turn that great book into even a greater book by turning it into an audiobook that the author themselves narrate. Uh, because again, as a nonfiction author, it's your story. You lived it, you've breathed it, <laughs> you've enjoyed every aspect of creating this awesome book and that was uh, dear to your heart, the story that you felt compelled to uh, get out into the world. Uh, your unique style, your unique voice is in the written word. And so it only makes sense for you as the author to narrate your own audiobook, because again, it's your voice and your story, and only you can speak your story the way that you intended to be heard. So uh, that's what I do as an audiobook coach. I have a, a, a coaching program that's called Your Book, Your Voice, and uh, it's a six-week program where I provide you with uh, the professional equipment you need to record your audiobook, teach you how to set it up, all the preparation work that goes into that. Then I teach you how to do a great narration. And then I get you published on Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books. I call it the AAA, Audible, Amazon, and Apple, uh, because you do need to be on those distribution platforms as those are the most popular. Uh, and that's where people go to first. Uh, of course, there's other distribution platforms that are out there, and uh, you can get on those as well. But in my audiobook coaching program, I do focus on those three and get you published. And you get it done in three weeks, not three months um, or six weeks. I'm sorry, six weeks, not six months or six years. It's only six weeks. So it's a, a quick uh, course to get through, and uh, you will not be cutting corners because. Of course, as your coach, I won't allow you to do that, but you will have quality product, of course. And uh, my job as your coach and your producer uh, is uh, going to make sure that you have a great audiobook that sounds great and that meets all the specs to uh, be published. Now, today's topic is an interesting one. It's called Blinders Are for Horses. And there's, of course, a reason for uh, calling this uh, episode that in particular. Uh, which we're going to dive into in a second. I was thinking about uh, the book that I had written. Uh, I am a self-published author as well. I have a book called Lights Action You, and one of the uh, chapters in here is called Blinders Are for Horses, and the topic of the chapter is about missed opportunities. So let's talk a little bit about blinders, right? Blinders are for horses. Like, what are blinders for? right? Why do horses have blinders? Now, uh, they're also known as blinkers or blindfolds. I prefer blinders. It just, you know, for me, just seems to make uh, the most sense. And, uh, you know, you see that uh, on in horse racing, the horses have them. Uh, maybe uh, I've seen them in, in New York, of course, uh, doing the uh, Central Park <laughs> horse rides. They got their blinders on. Uh, so what is the purpose? Right? What is the purpose of blinders? Well, the purpose really is to keep uh, the horse focused and what's going on directly in front of them, keeping them focused and not distracted. And uh, blinders also help horses from being spooked. It helps them stay calm, uh, especially in horse racing. Uh, there's a lot of distractions going on. You have the jockey sitting on top of that horse, you know, whipping that horse, come on, let's go. And the horse, you know, what they're concerned about is just, I want to get this done. <laughs> so the blinders help them from being distracted from the other horses that are next to them or being distracted from um, 
something else that that may spook them. Uh, so that's why they wear blinders. Uh, also, uh, it, again, in regards to the racing, it does encourage forward movement, right? They, you want them to just focus on what's happening in front of them and get to that finish line. So that's basically what uh, blinders are for horses. Now, it's a great analogy. It's a really great analogy when you compare it to yourself as an author. Remember, you as a nonfiction author, you have a published book. You are an author brand. Your book is your product, whether it's an ebook or paperback or hardcover. Uh, and uh, hopefully an audio book, because you've got to have it as an audio book, as again, the audiobook world is, is continually growing and expanding. And that is a market you definitely need to be uh, tapped into as a nonfiction author. Now, um, blinders are a great analogy because we get so focused sometimes on what we're doing that we uh, do not... Uh, become aware of other things that are happening around us. Um, I'm gonna give you an example and a story about that uh, in just a second, but I just want you to think about that analogy, right? When you're writing your book, now there, there's, there's two ways of looking at blinders. I call them work blinders, right? <laughs> it can be very helpful because it can keep you focused or it can be a detriment because you are, since you are so focused, you may miss out on other things that are going on around you, and that could be a detriment. And uh, in my book, uh, Lights Action You, when I did write about that, the story that I shared uh, is about an opportunity that was missed. Uh, this book, by the way, is uh, about my 30 plus years of working in the entertainment business, and I just pulled. Um, a variety of different stories and experiences and put them in this book. And with each story, uh, this is more focused on career coaching and uh, life coaching, uh, how you can navigate through various situations uh, in your work. And uh, the book helps you uh, really attain true work-life balance. So missed opportunities is something that could be a de detriment in your, your job and your career, and especially for you as an author. So the story that I share in this book uh, is this. I, uh, I've been a fan of Queen since I was a kid growing up. Uh, the first, what was my first Queen album? Probably was Night at the Opera, right? Most people have that album, it has Bohemian Rhapsody on it and other great songs on that album. Um, but I really got into, um, as a kid, I really got into uh, Queen's earlier material. You know, we're talking Queen, Queen 2. Uh, for me, uh, from a musical standpoint, very incredible songwriting, very progressive. A lot of people don't realize how progressive Queen really was back in the day, especially on their first uh, two or three albums. I mean, and, I mean, just all their albums are, are just incredible. But it's not what a lot of people think are like, you know, Under Pressure or Radio Gaga or those types of songs. I mean, listen to Queen 2. That's like my all-time favorite. <laughs> Great album. Anyway, um, at that time, uh, when I wrote uh, this story or when this story happened, I was working at uh, Fox Studios in Los Angeles on the studio lot. I was a project manager for their features. And uh, on this particular day, uh, since Fox was the studio that released the uh, biopic Bohemian Rhapsody, um, a week before the movie was released, they, there was a, um, a private screening and uh, an after party that was being held right next to the building that I worked in. There was a screening theater right across uh, from my building and they had an open area that they were setting up for, uh, for an after party. So on that particular day, it was on a Friday, I remember, and uh, it was an incredibly stressful day. I mean, being a project manager for a major studio is a stressful job. It's still a corporate job. <laughs> still a corporate job. So there's still a lot of stress with that. It's not all entertainment <laughs> and fun. Um, so on that particular day, I mean, I was just inundated with a lot of work. So I had my work blinders on big time. I needed to step away from my desk. So I leave my desk, go downstairs. I'm exiting the building and there's a, a guy coming in to the building 
And I look at him, he looks at me, he gives me a little smile, we go on our way. All right. So as I'm walking away, in my mind, I'm thinking, it's just probably just somebody famous. Because you do see a lot of celebrities working on the studio a lot. Didn't think much of it. A little bit later on in the afternoon, uh, this, the after party was happening. Um, I saw that guy again, and there were just a bunch of people. And I, I, like, I walked right through it. <laughs> I walked right through that after party. And um, went back to my desk, got back to work, work blinders in full swing. Not even thinking about anything except I got this, these deadlines to hit and, you know, just crazy, crazy. Well, come Monday, uh, I, I follow uh, Queen's guitarist Brian May on Instagram. And uh, I was looking through his Instagram and I see this video of Brian May in a Fox Studios golf cart being carted around, parking behind my building and going into the screening theater. And then it hit me. That guy that I had walked by and said to myself, nah, probably somebody famous, was Brian May. Missed opportunity, man. A <laughs> huge missed opportunity because being such a Queen fan and because my work blinders were on and I was just so not focused and not aware of what was going on around me, I walked by one of my guitar heroes. And I am a musician, I am a guitar player, I do music composition as well as just my own thing uh, for film and TV as well. It just didn't click. Can you believe it? It just didn't click. What a missed opportunity. It was Brian freaking May. Unbelievable. And it's funny because on the, you know, at the studio, you know, we have a policy, uh, you know, you're gonna run into famous people, you leave them alone, you don't talk with them, you don't, you know, get all fanny, you know, fancy all over them. You let them do their thing. They're there to do a job. You're there to do a job. You know, it's a respect thing. Uh, but I tell you, had I not had my work blinders on, that would have been out the window, man. I would have gone up to Brian May, struck up a conversation, taken a selfie with him, <laughs> whatever I can do. And, uh, and you know it, because he really is a really cool guy. He probably would have done it and not even thought twice of it. However, missed opportunity. That's when wearing blinders is a bad thing because you're not aware of other things that are happening around you and you can miss on a great opportunity, a great opportunity, and it's gone, right? When am I going to run into Brian May again? I don't know, <laughs> you know? Anyway, that's the, basically the story that I shared uh, in my book, uh, and that is followed up by uh, about how to deal with missed opportunities. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in, in detail in just a bit. There's one more thing that, that I wanted to share with you since, since we're talking about music and bands. Um, another missed opportunity for me was uh, not going to see Rush play their concert in Los Angeles, which happened to end up being their last show ever. That was it. Had an opportunity to go, and I didn't go. Missed opportunity. <laughs> and of course, now you're going, okay, what does this have to do with me being an author? Well, everything, because you can miss a lot of opportunities when you have your work blinders on. When we're, uh, when we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about the detrimental aspect of wearing your work blinders. And there is, on the other side, uh, positivity. There is some positivity to having work blinders, especially as an author. Um, missed opportunities, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, after we take a quick break, but I do wanna just touch on that for a little bit. And then uh, we're gonna dive into some things that you can do to help you through missed opportunities and then of course talk about things that you can do to uh, help you with work blinders where they are a benefit all right so uh, if you have any stories you want to share by all means type them into the comments if you have any questions about uh, audiobooks audiobook world let me know as an audiobook coach I'd be happy to answer those questions as well love to have you get involved in the conversation uh, by all means feel free to uh, uh, go into the comments in the chat all right, you are listening to Your Book, Your Voice. I'm your host, Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. Uh, 
Thank you for being here. We're going to take a quick break. We will be back. We are streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. Got more coming for you, so don't go away. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And welcome back to Your Book, Your Voice. I'm your host, Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. Uh, again, I am an audiobook coach and producer. If you are a nonfiction author and you have a published book and you have not turned it into an audiobook, you definitely need to do so. Uh, and you need to narrate it yourself. Um, if you are interested in learning more about my audiobook coaching program, which is called Your Book, Your Voice, uh, we're going to put up a little graphic on the screen. This is for booking a call with me, uh, and that's how it all starts, okay? Um, all you need to do is schedule a call with me. I want to talk with you uh, about your book. Um, I'm going to talk with you about your marketing goals, and then, of course, give you more details about the uh, Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program. Um, we also have another graphic. Uh, it's actually a picture that has the, uh, the bit.ly link on there. We're going to pop that on for you as well so that you can uh, uh, grab a, a screen grab of that. Um, this is, of course, to uh, get a copy of the book, Lights Action You, which has that story that I told you about. Um, we're going to show you the, uh, the other graphic that has the uh, information where you can get in touch with me to uh, book your call for the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program. Uh, and there it is. So grab a screen grab of that. Uh, and for those of you who are, are listening to the podcast, I know right now we do have uh, visual and audible at the same time. Uh, but those of you who are only audio only, uh, I'll just spell out the link for you is it's bit.ly forward slash audiobook onboarding. So it's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash audiobook onboarding. All right. Schedule a call with me. That is my direct calendar link. Again, I want to talk with you about your book, uh, find out what your goals are, and I'll give you more details about the uh, audiobook coaching program. And uh, let's talk because you should and you do need to get your book in audiobook form and uh, hit that market because that is a growing market. And uh, it's just a great way to boost revenue. It's a great way to expand your, your uh, audience base. And it's a great way for you to tell your story in your own voice. Absolutely, 100%. All right, so getting back to our topic of blinders are for horses. Now, that was my story. If they were both uh, music-related. But, you know, as an author, think about it. You know, was there a, a chance or an opportunity for you to maybe go to an author's convention or travel somewhere or you know, do something that would be a great, maybe a networking experience. 
brand and maybe uh, you know sell some books or uh, again network with other uh, people in the book industry and you didn't do it for one reason or another. Maybe you did have work blinders on or maybe it came down to one thing that seems to be uh, a universal cause of why people don't do things when they know they should and that is fear. Fear in all its form, in all its varieties of, of ways that, that fear creeps itself into your psyche, um, that's very detrimental. And that will create a barrier for you that is stopping you from doing the things that you want to do and doing the things that you need to do. Now, remember, you're an author, okay? You have to, first of all, Take yourself 100% seriously as a business because this is your author brand. All decisions that you make as an author come down to you, all right? You are the CEO of you. One of the catchphrases I throw out all the time. You are the CEO of you. The buck stops with you, all right? Go to the bathroom, stand in the mirror. You see that person looking back at you? They're the boss. That's where the buck stops, okay? The decisions are up to you. So. Don't allow fear to stop you from moving forward, from moving your author business forward, especially when it comes to narrating your own audiobook. One of the biggest fears that I hear about uh, with all the clients that I work with, you know, to some degree, some people are more confident than others, but there still is a level of uh, lack of confidence of believing in their voice, of loving their voice, of thinking that. Um, I just don't have a good voice. I don't like how I sound. And you got to crush those false beliefs because those false beliefs are creating barriers and those barriers are stopping you from making good decisions as an author. So don't let that stop you. You have a great voice. I mean, if you go to my website at robertlanecoaching.com, if you go there and you scroll down the, the, uh, the homepage, uh, I have a few clips of uh, authors that have gone through my program. Listen to them. They're short little clips, but you know what? They sound great. They sound great. They did such a great job. Uh, I had a, a guy who is a, a voiceover artist who uh, works in uh, the uh, entertainment industry who listened to those clips, and he thought that they were uh, professional narrators. And I'm like, no, those are the authors. That's the authors telling their story. You can do it and you have a great voice. You just have to love your voice and believe in your voice. And, uh, you know, again, in the, the audiobook coaching program that I do teach, uh, mindset work, confidence, putting yourself in the right frame of mind, that's all part of it. And those are very important uh, aspects of doing a great audiobook narration. It's not just, you know, let's hit record and just, you know, read, 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 read. It's more to it than that. It's so much more than that. And that's why uh, you know, as a coach, I love helping people and helping authors bring out their best with their voice. You have what it takes. You absolutely have what it takes. So what happens when you have a missed opportunity? Uh, you know, work blinders, right? Uh, you know, I, I can beat myself up for not going to that last Rush concert in Los Angeles. I can beat myself up for, you know, being so ingrained in, in a job that I miss talking uh, and hanging out and just maybe even getting a picture with my one of my guitar heroes, Brian May from Queen. Are you going to replay that that bad movie over and over in your brain? No, no, that serves no purpose. All it does is it affects you uh, not only mentally, but it does affect you physically. And you don't want to put yourself through that. OK, missed opportunities can cause anxiety. It can cause, you know, both physical and mental anxiety. You do feel it physically and you sure feel it mentally so you don't want to put those negative things in your mind because again your belief system and your habits are the fuel for your subconscious your belief systems and your habits are the fuel for your subconscious so if you uh, don't believe in your voice or you think you don't have a good voice that is just really bad fuel that you're putting in your subconscious fuel tank. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You want to put positivity and you, and you know, again, affirmations of course are great. And you probably hear this all the time, but you know what? It really does make a difference. 
the more you say, I love my voice. I have a great voice. I, I Not only am I an awesome author, I am an awesome narrator. I can narrate my own audiobook. Only I can tell my story the way I want it to be told. And you tell yourself that over until you feel it. It's not just saying it, it's feeling it. Because when you feel it, then you believe it. And when you believe it, then you're putting in the right type of fuel for your subconscious. Then your subconscious is going to believe it. And that is really important. I talk a lot about the intangibles when it comes to um, doing an audiobook. And the intangibles are the emotion, are the energy, your energy, your, your, your pace, your purpose, your core reason of why you wrote your book and why you need to tell this story. All these intangibles are things that you feel. And when you feel it and you bring those feelings into your audiobook narration, it's going to come through. And that is the secret sauce that your listener taps into. They may not know why your book is so engaging, but that's why. They may not realize it, but that's why. When you bring those intangibles into your uh, audiobook narration, you're going to sound fantastic. You will sound like a professional narrator. And people will love your book and be engaged and compelled from opening credits to closing credits. They're going to listen to that book and they're going to be like, wow, man, that was, that was a great story. I want to listen to that again. And the other great thing about having an audiobook, by the way, is not only as an added revenue stream and, and uh, expanding your, your audience base, but it's also helping you with, uh, with sales of your ebook, paperback, and hardcover. You know, if you have those other formats along with your audiobook, I can't even tell you how many times, and I do this too, like I'll, I'll get the audiobook, and, but I'll also buy the paperback because sometimes, you know, I'll just sit in bed and I just want to listen to a great book and I'm going to read along. And if it's something that's really compelling and engaging, especially a, a great nonfiction book, if there's something that really jumps out at me, you know, I'll stop that narration and I'll grab my highlighter and I'm highlighting that book because it's like, I want to remember that. That was a great story or a great point or a great phrase or a great sentence or whatever it is in that book that just got me to, to you know, stop and go, wow, you know, I need to mark that. So it, it's, it's another uh, aspect for you to uh, boost some revenue by selling not only your audiobook, but people will buy your ebook paperback or even the hardcover if you have that available. So it's really good to have your book in a variety of, of formats. So one more thing I want to touch on in regards to uh, missed opportunities and wearing those, those blinders, right? Blinders can be a detriment, but think of it this way. If you miss an opportunity, just own it, learn from it, and, and move on. Own it, learn from it, move on. Okay, owning it is just like, hey, you know what? Uh, I made a decision or maybe, maybe it was a decision that you made or maybe it was a lack of decision that you made. Own it and just say, okay, you know what? I acknowledge it. I'm not gonna beat myself up about it. The decision was made. All right, I'm, I'm owning it. And again, learn from it. And I'm sure you've heard this a million times, you know, failure is not failure, failure is growth. But it's true, failure is growth. Growth. What have you learned by a decision that you made or a decision that you didn't make? What was the outcome and what can you learn from that? If it was something that was positive that helped uh, move your business forward, then you, you learn that, that's great, all right? If it was something that was negative, like a missed opportunity because you had your work blinders on, your author blinders on, um, then you learn from it, okay? It's like, okay, I know that I shouldn't do this. And maybe here are some options that I can do to avoid that from happening again, all right? That's how you learn from it. And that's where you do grow as a business owner, author brand, business owner, and then you move on. You move on, you push forward. Forward momentum always. You are always moving your business forward. Okay, and again, don't let fear stop you from doing the things that you need to do and especially doing the things that you want to do. You know, one of, you know what, one of the reasons why I missed that, um, that Rush concert because I didn't want to drive all the way down to the Forum in Los Angeles and, you know, in the city that I was in because it's kind of a seedy area. 
And I was like, ah, oh, I just, I don't want to do it. I just don't want to be around there. I just don't like the vibe and the energy and whatever. Yet I, I should have gone because all these fears, right? You're, fe you, you're being afraid, or I should say, I was being afraid of things that did not come to pass. And that's one thing that you need to learn is that you cannot allow fear or worry, right? You can't worry about things that have not happened, that have not come to pass because nine out of 10 times, the fear is unwarranted. That worry is unwarranted. What you, what you, were, uh, what you are afraid of, it's not gonna happen, right? 80 to 90% of the time, it never happens. Or the things that you worry about are things that never happen. So keep that in mind. And another thing to help you in regards to uh, having work blinders when they are a detriment is you need to remove them. You need to know when to have them on and when to remove them. Okay, so if you're going to remove them, that can be a good thing because then you are aware of your surroundings, not like a horse in a horse race who needs to only look forward and not be distracted. But when you don't have your work blinders on, you are aware of other things that are happening around you uh, that can bring up an opportunity and it puts you in the now and it puts you in the present moment. So that's why it's really important to know when to have your work blinders on and when to take them off. All right. We're going to take a quick break. Again, uh, I do appreciate you tuning in. If you have any comments, uh, by all means, please feel free to, to put them in the uh, comments and chat. Uh, and if you have any questions about uh, the audiobook world or just our topic about blinders for horses, uh, by all means, put them in there because I'd love to uh, answer any questions if you do have them. You are listening to Your Book, Your Voice. I'm Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. We are streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. Uh, we're going to talk about more positivity about uh, the blinders when we come back. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. And welcome back to Your Book, Your Voice. I'm Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. I'm an audiobook coach and producer. If you've uh, considered turning your nonfiction book into an audiobook, get in touch with me and I'll tell you about my audiobook coaching program, which is called Your Book, Your Voice. By the way, and I always seem to forget to do this and I apologize for that, I do have a freebie for you. I have a little gift for you, which is an audiobook narration reference guide. And this reference guide, I put in some uh, really cool uh, tools and techniques that you can utilize to help you with your audiobook narration. And it's a, it's a free download. Uh, there's a link, uh, as you see on the screen there. Uh, take a screen grab of that as well. Um, 
And for those of you that are audio only, it's another bit.ly link. So it's bit period ly forward slash narration reference guide. And uh, just grab your free guide. Uh, you can also go to robertlanecoaching.com uh, and it's uh, on my homepage as well if you want to grab it there. So uh, get your free copy. It's my gift to you. There you go. All right. So our topic again today is blinders are for horses. And we know why horses wear blinders or why there are uh, blinders for horses. And, you know, interesting fact that uh, blinders for horses have been around for a long, long time. Even back in ancient times, you know, when uh, the, the Roman uh, chariot racers, their horses had blinders on them as well. And again, for the same reason, help them uh, look forward uh, and not be distracted by the other horses or the other chariots or anything that, that would throw them off. Uh, again, that's the benefit of that. Now, there is one thing that uh, I did want to mention with horses, <laughs> not that I'm a big horse person, uh, I like riding horses, uh, but I'm not uh, in horse racing. However, um, horses have the blinders, but that is something that uh, it's crucial that 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 you understand that that there's a lot of training involved for those for those horses to have those blinders on. And, and I thought that was uh, really interesting to know that because I didn't realize I, you know that that there was some. Uh, training that that went along with it to, to help the horses uh, get used to wearing them, because obviously uh, when you do have blinders on, it does uh, restrict their natural ability to be able to see their surroundings. Uh, so there is some training involved, and that's that's an interesting point because if again if you start if you use that as as the analogy, sometimes we do need a little bit of training when it comes to us wearing our blinders. Right. Sometimes we do need a little bit of training. Now, there is a lot of uh, negativity and detriment that we talked about <laughs> having those blinders on, but there can also be some positivity to that. All right. So some of the benefits. All right. Let's think about this for a second. False fears. Right. If you have false fears and we touched on that uh, previously, if there are beliefs and habits that you have that are not serving you. All right. Then maybe it is uh, a positive thing to, for you to wear those blinders. If wearing blinders blocks out fear, blocks out uh, anything, worry, anything that, that stops you from moving forward with your business, especially if you're writing your book or if you're narrating your audio book, put the blinders on and it helps you get focused. There's an exercise that I do uh, that I have my clients do in my audiobook coaching program. There's a couple of mindset exercises in, in the program. Uh, and, but one of them is a grounding exercise. And that grounding exercise is to help the author be in the present moment, okay? Be focused, be in the present moment, be in the now. And part of the, uh, the exercise, part of the grounding exercise is to, um, Tap into your happy place. I call it your happy place. And your happy place is visualizing somewhere where you feel confident, you feel content, you feel joy, you feel empowered, um, whatever that happy place can be. Uh, and when you visualize yourself there, it's more than just seeing it. Again, getting back to feeling it, feeling happy, feeling content, feeling confident, feeling empowered. You want to have those feelings with you and you want to literally feel it. Because again, those feelings are what you bring into your audiobook narration. Intangibles are so important and I hit on that a lot in the audiobook coaching program. Because again, when someone can feel what you're feeling, when you're doing your narration and they are feeling the emotion that you felt when you wrote your book in the first place, but now you're feeling voice through your narration, they're going to feel it too. And man, does that draw them in? It's, it, when I'm editing, okay, I have my clients, they send me their audio files after they do their narration. I do all the editing for them and, uh, and then I output them for publication and I get them published, et cetera, et cetera. That's what I do in the program. 
But as I'm doing that, when I'm doing the final output of making their mastered audio files for their audiobook, that's when I really get to listen. And I tell you, now, of course, I've, I've heard a lot of audiobooks doing this, but every time, every time I am just sucked into their story. Why? Because they brought in their intangibles, their emotion, their feeling, their purpose, their core reason. All of that comes through in their voice. And I mean, there have been times uh, because uh, authors do send their audio files, uh, like if they record, you know, a chapter, they'll send it to me for editing. Then they record the next chapter and then they send it to me for editing. So uh, when I do the final uh, mix, I'm listening to it and I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat on some of these stories because they're just so good. They are so good. He's like, you guys are great writers and now you're great narrators. And I'm on the edge of my seat when I'm listening to this. And then, I, so then I, I'm telling the client, when are you going to send me the next chapter? I want to hear it. I want to know what happens next. And that is just such a great sign that shows the author that they did a great job. You know, they did a fantastic job doing their audio book narration. And you bring that in, right? You're bringing in that emotion. And that, again, makes an audiobook from just being average to something that's just so fantastic. And uh, I really want to hit this home, and I, I know I will say it a million times more, and that is you have what it takes. Your voice is great. Love your voice. You have what it takes to do a great audiobook narration. You do. You just do. You know, uh, people go through my program because they want the coaching to help them bring out the best that they can possibly be, and which I love doing. Uh, but you have what it takes, right? This, this head is a great resonator. It creates that wonderful voice that you have. So don't hate it. Don't hate your voice. Love your voice, because that's what makes you unique. And that's why another narrator could never do your book justice as a nonfiction author. It's your story. Only you can tell your story. All right, another narrator, no matter how great they are, no matter how professional they are, only they can tell the story in their way. It's not your way. It's going to be their interpretation, not your interpretation. So no matter how good that narrator is, it's going to be their interpretation. And, uh, and I'm a big advocate of not cutting corners. Don't you dare cut corners. And what I mean by that is if you think, oh, I'm just going to get, you know, AI to do my audiobook narration, you are cutting corners. You are cheapening your brand as an author. You are cheapening your product and you are lessening your expertise. People are not going to take you seriously. So all that work you do, you've done building your author brand goes out the window, right? It's you know, here's a good analogy, right? Think of it as when somebody breaks your trust, how hard is it for you to get them to uh, trust, right? How hard is it for them to get you to trust them again? When you cheapen your product, that's what happens. You lessen your expertise and you don't want to do that, not as an author. You put your heart your soul, all this work and effort, your blood, sweat, and tears, and money, and everything into creating this awesome book. Don't cheapen the brand. AI, forget it. Another narrator, as great as they can be, it's still not you. That's what makes you you. That's what makes your voice so great. That's why you need to narrate your own book. So never forget that, all right? Love your voice. Appreciate your voice. You have what it takes, okay? You have what it takes. Uh, you know, think of... Um, Think of blinders like this too. Here's a couple of analogies, right? Sometimes when blinders are a detriment, it's like watching four by three full screen, all right? When blinders are not a detriment and you take them off, it's like 16 by nine wide screen, letterbox. You get to see everything. <laughs> and when you get to see everything, you get to see um, opportunities. You also get to do things that keep you in the present moment because that is so important, all right? You gotta be in the present moment. Um, it's funny, I was thinking of another thing about blinders and it's, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard this term, driver hypnosis. When you're driving along, let's say you're on a road trip and your mind is off in somewhere else, right? You're not even, in a sense, paying attention. I mean, you, you are, like you're on autopilot. And you're driving, and you're driving, and you're driving, and then 
20 minutes later goes, you know, 20 minutes later, an hour goes by and you're like, what, how did I get here? How, how, how did I not, how did I, or how did I miss my turn off? Driver hypnosis. That's like having blinders on because you're so focused on, on something or your mind is focused on really something else. And even though your, your subconscious is in autopilot with the driving, you got those blinders on, right? Could be a missed opportunity. I missed my exit. Missed opportunity. <laughs> so just something to think about again. There is a time and a place when blinders are great, when you need to be focused, especially when you're writing your book or if you're doing your audiobook, you dedicate specific time to work on your book. Okay? You dedicate specific times to write on your book, whether, whether you're writing it or you're doing your narration. Uh, I have my clients uh, dedicate an hour a day. Maybe it's five days a week or seven days a week, whatever works for them. But they have to tell me what time and what days that they're working on their book, their audio book, because I'm going to hold them accountable to that. And that's when you do have your blinders on, because then you don't want to be disturbed. You want to be focused. All right. You want to get into that deep work mode where you are just in your zone. And then when you do your narration, you are in your zone. And that's when uh, you create greatness. That's when your voice sounds fantastic because you are in your zone. It's a beautiful thing. All right. It is great. And that's when uh, I hear fantastic audiobook narrations. Uh, we're going to take one more quick break. I do want to tell you a little bit more about the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program uh, when we come back. And uh, also we'll be putting up some more graphics about the uh, reference guide and how to get in touch with me and all that fun stuff too. So anyway, this is Your Book, Your Voice. I'm Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. Thank you so much. Don't go away. We're going to wrap things up with, uh, uh, again, telling you about the audiobook coaching program. We're streaming live on the Bull Brave TV network. Don't go away. Author, radio show host, and coach John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. We discover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation all right welcome back to your book your voice i'm robert a lane your host and uh, this is streaming live on the bold brave TV network. Our topic today is blinders are for horses. Um, hopefully you, uh, it has inspired you to think about that and think about the analogy of how that applies to you as an author or just in business in general and how uh, blinders can be a positive thing or a negative thing, when to have them on and when to take them off. 
Um, as an audiobook coach and producer, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program that I do. But before we do, I do want to again mention that uh, if you would like to get a copy of my free uh, audiobook narration reference guide, uh, we do have that. I'm going to pop that up on the screen there so you can see it. Uh, again, take a screen grab of that if you want. Uh, the the uh, link to grab your free narration reference guide is uh, is a bit.ly link. So it's bit.ly forward slash narration reference guide. And there's a lot of great uh, tools, both talking about the intangibles and, of course, some of the practical things that you can do to do a great audiobook narration. Uh, also, again, if you're interested in the uh, book that I have published, Lights Action You, uh, this is also available on Amazon. Of course, there's the ebook, the paperback, and of course, the audiobook. Uh, some more great stories from uh, my time working in the entertainment industry and, and uh, things that can, uh, lessons, tools, techniques that can help you navigate through various situations that I share in this book. So I uh, wanted to share with you that. And again, uh, if you want more information, you can always go to my website at robertlanecoaching.com. Uh, and uh, you can leave that graphic up there too. That's fine. Uh, there you go, robertlanecoaching.com. And that graphic, which is the one I do want to talk about, is if you want to schedule a call with me, that is my link to my calendar. Book a call. You talk to me directly. We'll talk about your book, uh, what you want to do as an audiobook. And then, of course, I'll give you more details about the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program. Uh, and again, for those of you that are just listening to the podcast on, from audio, the link, again, another bit.ly link, which is bit.ly forward slash audiobook onboarding. All right. So I do want to talk a little bit about the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program. Quick overview. Uh, this is a six-week program. And again, you will have your book uh, done and uploaded for publication by the end of the six weeks. So I take you through setup and preparation, narration, and publication. So the first part is setup and preparation. I provide the professional equipment for you. No joke. Microphone, headsets, sound isolation screen, pop filter. We go over the, uh, the program that you use to record your uh, audiobook on. I send this equipment to you, it's yours to keep forever. That's part of the program. Because again, I wanna make this so easy for you and so hassle-free, so you're not overwhelmed, you don't need to figure out, do I have to find a studio, do I have to hire an audio engineer, do I have to do this, do I have to do that? I teach you how to set up your own recording space in your office, in your home, wherever is comfortable for you. And I'm very methodical in my uh, program, so, uh, it's easy to set up, and I'm, of course, as your coach, I'm there with you every step of the way. The second part of, is the art of audiobook narration, how to do a great narration, uh, posture, how to breathe, how to deliver your, your story, and again, mindset, being in the right frame of mind, being in the present moment, tapping into your core reason of why you wrote your book, bringing the intangibles, the energy, the emotion, all that comes through in your narration. And we, we do a deep dive about that so that you are sounding fantastic. And then the third part is uh, there's the audio editing aspect of it. I handle all that for you. You send your audio files to me. I edit them, make sure they sound great. Uh, I don't mess with your pacing because that's all you. Right? We want to preserve the integrity of your book and the integrity of your style. So I don't change any of that, but I just make sure that your files sound great. And there are very specific uh, specifications for publication into Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books. You have to make sure that your files meet these specs. And uh, as you're obviously coach and producer, I make sure that your files are pristine, they meet the specs, and I upload them for you. So you don't even have to worry about that aspect of it. So if there are any issues, I know about them right away. I know what needs to be done to fix them. It's all done. You don't have to worry about it. All your mastered audio files are sent back to you for you to have forever, of course. And uh, again, you're hiring me as an audiobook uh, coach and producer. I am not taking any royalties. I don't want anything uh, from your audiobook. I'm just there to help you create it and to get it published. So you own rights 100%, your royalties are 100%. I don't take any of that. 
some companies do, some narrators do. If you, you know, we're working with a narrator, but you're going to be narrating it yourself anyway, so that, that doesn't even really matter. But um, again, it's all, it's all yours, okay? So uh, we also talk about uh, marketing strategies and things that you can do to, uh, when you launch your audiobook. And if you do have a book, you know, let's say you published a book a year ago or two years ago or even 10 years ago, turn it into an audiobook, narrate it as an audiobook, resurrect that book, bring it back to life, do a relaunch. It would be a great thing. So, uh, you know, don't let uh, an older book that you've published die on the vine, right? An audiobook is a great way to bring it to the forefront again and get people interested in your book, okay? So if you are interested, again, get in touch with me. You can go to robertlanecoaching.com. Uh, there's uh, buttons there to uh, book a call. Uh, we'll, we'll put that, that graphic up one more time. Uh, this is to book a call with me at the onboarding uh, call uh, link. So uh, there it is. So just check it out there and uh, and schedule your call. I, I look forward to talking with you. Again, uh, it's a bit.ly uh, uh, link, which is a bit.ly forward slash audiobook onboarding. Book your call with me. I'd love to talk with you. And I do it this way for a reason, because we, uh, if you enroll into the course, we're working together and I want to establish uh, a business relationship with you. And uh, I want to talk with you about your book and know that uh, you're talking to a real human being. It's not one of those, uh, you know, links where you, you, you scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll forever and ever and ever, and then they want your credit card. I don't work that way. I want to talk to a real person, a real author, and I want you as a real author to talk to me as a real person because it, it's a business relationship. And that's why I always talk to my clients before I enroll them into the program, all right? All right, so uh, with that, I hope you had a, a, a great time hanging out. I always have a great time uh, talking with you about uh, the audiobook world and just a variety of other things that can help you as an author and as a narrator for your own audiobook. All right, um, again, thank you so much. I do wanna end things as I always wrap up my podcasts and any lives that I do with this. When you're out and about in the world, say hello to a stranger, smile at them, maybe give them a compliment. It takes five or 10 seconds out of your time, but that small gesture of kindness can make the world a difference in somebody's life because you don't know what they're going through. And just that little act of kindness can really make their day. So with that, my friends, go out there, be good humans. We will be back, of course, next Thursday here at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific time with the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. I'm Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. We are streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much for hanging out. This has been Your Book, Your Voice with host Robert A. Lane. Tune in each week for another powerful and informative episode of Your Book, Your Voice. Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave TV Network.